I have had this since I went to New York in 2016. And I've had this for five years. I still like a good liquid lipstick, a liquid matte lipstick. It's the only product I use consistently. Casper's playing with my Christmas tree. I guess so. Today's video, we are doing a review of KVD Vegan Beauty. It used to be known as Kat Von D, but she left the brand early this year, I believe. So it's now KVD Vegan Beauty. I have some thoughts on Kat Von D. Not all negative. I used to really look up to Kat Von D. There are things I don't agree with. Um, there are still things that I think she does really well. Maybe I'll talk about her and her scandals later down the line in, our, in a commentary related video. But today we're just talking about the makeup. I'm wearing a lot of it today um, because I needed to retest it out. I haven't worn KVD makeup in a long time. So much so that one of, one of the items is so out of date, but it still goes on really well. So I'm not getting rid of it. I know it's probably not great for my skin, but it's not like I wear it every single day. I wear makeup like, what, once a week nowadays rather than like six times a week. <laughs> Let's get into this. So the first thing is the mirror. A lot of KVD Vegan Beauty, obviously, when it was Kat Von D, a lot of my stuff had Kat Von D. Obviously, I bought it when it was Kat Von D. More gothic kind of stuff. I think that's one of the reasons why I really, really love the idea of the brand, because there was just no kind of goth-centric kind of brands. They were just very pretty girl next door kind of vibes for a really really long time it's very different now i appreciate the new kid on the block is kind of like milk cosmetics and there's plenty of others don't get me wrong one of the things i really loved about her brand is because it was very like gothic and eccentric like her so with the mirror it does have a kind of star tattoos that she has around her face around here i really like this mirror i use these in tutorials all the time but I get overexposed really easy so i don't use it as often anymore this is plastic not weighty or anything um, I really like the design. I like the stars on the uh, mirror itself. It doesn't, the stars don't get in the way. I still like it. I s still keep it around. One of the products I've had for the longest time, <laughs> the matte foundation. I really do want to try the, like, I think it's called the True Portrait Foundation. The bottle looks stunning. It looks gorgeous. And I've heard Sophie Does Life say really good things about it. I have the Locket Foundation. I have had this since I went to New York in 2016. And I'm talking March 2016, so this is almost five years old. So I know I need to get rid of it. But I have like so little left now. The bottle's just so pretty. The cap has like the KVD on it. It's meant to be like a little ink splatter or something. You've got all the roses. You can't deny that her packaging was always incredible. I am wearing it today. It is still super matte. It's a matte foundation though that doesn't dry down. I have a ton of matte foundations. Like one of the reasons why I don't particularly pick this one up is because I have tons of others. Now this is like a super super full coverage foundation. One of the reasons I don't pick this up is because it's it's a thick cakey foundation. I'll be honest, it breaks part of my skin. Like matte foundations I've found with my oily skin. Like after about six to eight hours at max, you can see it's starting to literally break apart. It's not pretty. So I don't wear matte foundations all that often anymore. Matte foundations used to be a big thing for a really long time. People prefer dewier skin. People prefer natural kind of looking skin nowadays, like less coverage. So, I mean, matte foundations just aren't the thing anymore. If you want a matte full coverage foundation, this is still really good. What is this called? The Locket Concealer Cream. I had such high hopes for this. I don't know if it's because I have a lighter shade. I got a smaller one of this, just because I wanted to test it out. I got, got one of like the little minis with a little mini of the powder, which I'm going to talk about in a second. And I loved it. I thought I bought the same shade. This is super, super, super light, like almost white. I love the doe foot, like the doe foot's like a nice angled doe foot, it's like a teardrop kind of thing. And it holds a decent amount of product. Again, love the packaging, I love that it's got like this drop kind of thing on it, it's really cool. I don't like this concealer anymore. Unfortunately, I feel like there's so many better concealers that do way, 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 way better. And I actually used the concealer and the loose powder underneath my eyes today. Oh, did my eyes look crepey. It's not as smoothing as I like. I need a good amount of coverage, but I just don't want you to enhance my lines. My under eyes, like, I don't know how well you guys can tell if I turn this down a little bit. You see, 
It's just so much, like, look, look at that. I think they're a better out there, unfortunately. Speaking of loose powders, so I have had this thing forever and I'm finally getting through it. I will, will admit, half of this pot, oh god, half of this pot was in like a container. I've still got the container, I don't know. Packaging, really cool. A lot of this is powder. I could not get through this powder as much as I tried. And I wanted to, because I wanted to get rid of this powder. This is like the locket powder, I think. A lot of these locket kind of things are just so drying. Like my face feels tight, it feels dry. Decent, I'd hate it under my eyes because it just makes my eyes look super crepey. It's okay, I have so many powders I prefer. This is just fine. And in my eyes, you need to do better than fine these days. Locket setting spray. This has been a holy grail of mine for a really, really long time. It is a nice fine mist. It doesn't have like an overwhelming scent and it is super, 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 super long wearing. I think this is 10,000 times better than the Urban Decay all night art setting spray again this one you'll put it on and your face will feel a bit tight but that's because it is literally gripping on to your makeup if you touch your face and things like that and you're you're used to like just not being aware of that kind of stuff this definitely helps you just want a really nice setting mist that has a more long wearing effect the mister is incredible Incredible. It's the only product I use consistently. The shade and light contour kit, the big like six pound one. I was always tempted to buy it, but again, super expensive and I knew I was only gonna ever use maybe two shades. And to be honest, I probably would have only used one because this shade is too dark for me. I tried to use it under my eyes. Like it's a nice matte, matte powder. Um, I tried to use it under my eyes in a tutorial a while ago. I'll see if I can find it and link it here. Um, and you can see my the underneath of my eye where it was nice and bright from my concealer just completely get darker. It was so disheartening. And the rest of that eyeshadow look I love. Um, the contour's really nice. If the shades work for you, it's great. Again, it has like the really cool packaging. I use the contour today. It's just a nice ashy contour. Back with everything nowadays, you can find cheaper ones, but it is a really nice formula. Again, still very consistent. Lastly, for face, I'll be honest, I only got this because Lolita was the thing at the time. And this is an eyeshadow and blush. Jesus, do not use this as a blush. Look how old this package is. I used it as a blush today. It doesn't look too bad, but it is so 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 pigmented i think this shade would be better on someone with medium to deep skin tones i'll be honest like this probably isn't for me who's a fair skinned lady i use literally had to dip my brush in and then dab it off on the back of my hand and even then i had to be really careful with how much i was applying it's really nice it's a lovely color actually it looks like i haven't touched it because i think i've only used it like a handful of times but just before we go on to eyes i just want to talk about eyebrows so you probably noticed that i have red eyebrows today and that is because I'm using the, what is this called? The Super Brow, the 24 hour Super Brow Longwear Pomade. Really cool packaging. However, I, I had such high hopes for this pomade. It's too creamy. I was even hoping that because I'd had, I've had this for well over a year. I think I've had this for almost two. It's still so creamy. I was hoping it would have dried out a little bit and maybe be easier to use. It's too creamy. It's a great colour, I love the colour, it's vibrant red, like my hair's normally actually a bit more vibrant than this, I need to redye it. I love that they do, you know, yellows and blues and things like that, because people use this for like graphic liner and things like that, it's not just for brows. I just don't like the formula. This this is great for like an eyeliner formula, because it's creamy and you can do like loads of stuff with it. But for a brow formula, for a brow pomade, it needs to be a little bit more puff. Which is one of the reasons why people actually prefer the Anastasia Beverly Hills ones when they've dried out a little bit. Not super dried out. I've had it for a couple of weeks, kind of dried out. This I've had for two years and hasn't dried out at all. Brow products I freaking love. The Signature Brow. This is a brow pencil, but it's a brow pencil that is a, like, skinny line. It creates brow hairs, like really really well it's a line it's not just a, a a pencil it is a thin kind of line and because of that i just think it it creates brow hairs so well it's probably my favorite high-end brow pencil i've ever tried and i've tried like and i've had anastasia Beverly hills and this like 
is above and beyond benefit and anastasia <sighs> eyeshadow so the first eyeshadow i ever got oh my god this is completely cracked i didn't even realize again i've had this for five years this is the metal crush eyeshadow synergy it's such a beautiful bronze shade this was my favorite eyeshadow for a really really long time i used to put this on just all over the lid if i ever wanted to do like a sultry kind of look it's still a gorgeous shade i have no idea if they still stock half this stuff but i just wanted to give you an idea of formulas and stuff and then have the better together so i talked about the Too faced side my Too faced review which did ages ago it's not a great review but then this side so this side was always my favorite because it had more me kind of shades in it the white is like super white I used it underneath my brow bone today that's why they're like stark white <laughs> underneath I used the gray and the black uh in my crease today it, they didn't blend out the greatest especially the black but again this is like three or four years old this palette red used to be my absolute favorite shade it's like a metallic kind of red it's so pretty Great color for christmas actually um i used the sort of silver kind of shade in the middle of my lid and underneath here as well to kind of tie that in the love struck shade i used on my inner corner it's not super super shimmery to be fair but it's pretty it's like a nice wash of kind of shimmer color in here so you can hardly see it really dig in there i think after like three four years this palette still does really well um so i would imagine that some of the other palettes that i i have been tempted to get but again i've got so many palettes i'm trying not to buy so much nowadays the formula is as good as these i'm sure they'll be fantastic and again i've seen really good reviews of the newer palettes i actually had three of these like little eye shade and light palettes again packaging so cool it's like a little coffin i got rid of all of them except this one this one i thought i'd get them more like use out of because it has like a brown and i don't understand like who's using this pink does that not look way better i used the cream today and i used the brown recently and the mattes have always been amazing i really really do like still really enjoy this palette i think it's a good step if you don't want to buy the bigger palettes one of the most talked about for a really long time was the shade and light palette and i ended up buying the revolution one because at the time i couldn't afford to spend like 40 pounds on a palette it looks literally exactly the same as this there is revolution ones that are affordable like this i think was like a tenner last one i want to talk about is the alchemist palette this is like when everyone was into like super super holographic um kind of shades like it just shows right that they can do shimmery metallic looking stuff so why are their highlighters always glittery explosive mess I hate their highlighters i've swatched their highlighters so many times in store so excited about what they're gonna look like hoping that i can support the brand and i cannot stand them ever the thing that kind of caught everyone's attention at one b came out with this brand the tattoo liner i currently only have a like a mini one um I have like a ton of liners that to be honest I kind of prefer now. It's still a really good liner. I used it today. It's like a bristle tip. You can see there. It's got like more flexibility. It's really nice liner. Mine's not showing great just because I've, again I've had it for a while. <laughs> really cool. Again it has like a lot of stars and stuff all over it because because she had like the tattoos. This was my favourite liner for a really really long time. And a lot of people's favourite liners because it was just so easy to use because it had the bristle tip. It wasn't so structured with just like a, a felt tip really nice still highly recommend lip products everlasting glimmer veil i use this a lot and it was super long wearing i will say look how this is like a super metallic lip this is when everyone was really into metallic lips this is like bright orange it smells nice also the packaging's kind of like misleading because it makes out that it looks this small but actually a lot of that packaging is in the lid like it's less wasteful and i love that you can see the color through here if you like metallic lips and i know no one likes metallic lips anymore but if you like metallic lips this was really cool the lip liner i use this in a recent ish get ready with me still to this day i still think these are super 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 creamy lip liners I'm literally hardly touching on my hand it's so creamy i've actually been trying to get the bow and arrow shade because it's like a nice cool tone hard to find twist up 
cool tone lip liners. I am wearing it underneath my lip gloss today. I'm not, the lip gloss I'm wearing is not a KBD lip gloss. Just, I didn't want to wear the only like bold shades I have from here with this eye look, so I kind of just wanted to grab a nude. The lip liners are definitely a really, really good product if you can find one in a shade you love. Okay, the lipstick bullets. I only have Noble and it's like, again, a really bright pink. I got this a long time ago. It's actually quite a drying lipstick. I put it on today and um, actually underneath this, this lip gloss and I had to put the lip gloss on it to make it less like super, super pink. Well, this was gonna be more of a nude, I think, when I bought it. I honestly just got it because I wanted one of the studded bullets because I think the studded bullets are really, really cool. I hate the color, it's not. It looked super, super drying on my lips. I was trying to do like an ombre between like the OG Lolita lip liner and this and it just, whew, it didn't work. They're liquid lipsticks. I still like a good liquid lipstick, a liquid matte lipstick. It doesn't transfer underneath a mask. It doesn't transfer necessarily very much when you're eating or drinking or anything. I still actually really like this Lolita lipstick. I was gonna get rid of it and then I've gone back into these kind of more bold, redder, kind of toned lipsticks. Not something I wear super, super often, but I wear it enough nowadays that I didn't want to get rid of it. Again, packaging, so on point cap. It's so freaking stunning. I will never not appreciate the amount of time, effort, and design that goes into like the KVD products then or now. Just two kind of honorable mentions really quick. I have the Shade and Light eyeshadow and like face brushes. Pretty sure you can't get either of these anymore, but I just wanted to mention the kind of quality. They're very soft, they're expensive, like these are more expensive brushes. You can get a lot of different brushes, Morphe and Elf and Wet n Wild, that do exactly the same job. You do not need KVD brushes. I'm just mentioning that if you do like the kind of aesthetic, again, of the brushes. They are nice, you will not be disappointed. That is everything for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a like if you did, and subscribe if you feel like it, I would really, really appreciate it. I'm gonna be doing a review on Benefit um, very soon. I'm just, I'm waiting for one product to turn up, and I thought it was gonna turn up two weeks ago, but there's something wrong with my post. I do have a bunch of stuff from Trace and from Milani, so I will be doing reviews on those very, very soon, so if you, Want to see that? Please make sure you subscribe and I hope to see you all very soon in the next video.